I pray, dear Lord, that our lives, people will see Jesus in our lives as we walk around and among people. And um, we thank you, Lord, that even right now we have a place that we can come and gather in your name. We, we still have that privilege. And we recognize that around the world there are many Christians who are having to assemble in secret, Lord. And we just pray for them as well. And uh, ask your blessings upon them. We just pray for this time of worship. We pray for the anointing of the word that comes forth. And we give you praise and glory in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, we are small in number today because I guess we didn't get the message. Everybody was leaving to go to the beach or somewhere, mountains or whatever. This may be the largest uh, exodus we've had for a Sunday in a long while. But school is out and vacations are starting. But we're glad you're here. And what, I'm, I'm feeling it because the people that are gone are our worship people. So you're going to get retro worship today. It's called retro. I'm going to do songs that I've always loved in my whole ministry. These are some of the retro songs of the past that I, I think should be still sung because they're such worshipful songs to the Lord. So let's stand together and let's sing them together. I worship you
Solomon's temple. They could not minister for the glory that came down. And I'm sure that's where this song was written out of that story of the great manifestation of God's glory at the dedication of the temple. Let's sing this again.
times do we remember that our hearts were mended, troubles vanished because the presence of God came and touched us so real and so powerful. It's such a true song that we understand what it means because we've experienced that throughout our entire walk with the Lord. It was saying one of Carmen's songs. I Nobody I liked any better than going to a Carmen concert. concert. Man, it was good. Bless God for all that he's done. Yes. Let's sing it again. Bless God for all he's done. Bless God for Christ his Son. So um, we need your help. Desperately need your help. Miss Miss uh, Nancy, she's a she's a she's a tiny lady, but she's full of power. 
She, she is a petite woman who has more power than most people I know. I know I do this every time to you. <laughs> well, um, those of you who know me, I worked at UPS for almost 37 years, a couple weeks shy of that, uh, due to my disability at the time, but praise God, he brought me back from that. But I also attended NC State for 21 of my credit hours towards my degrees, and uh, UPS recruits heavily from NC State. I have a Facebook group with over 1,100 people in it that I maintain with former UPSers, so we can keep connected. We do a lot of prayer. And if you know Facebook, it will suggest people based on mutual friends. And it suggested a gentleman, and I knew his name because I used to do, I've done everything at UPS except drive the big rig and fly the plane. I drove the package car, I did everything. And I did payroll for a while, and I knew his name, that we had worked together, but I couldn't place his face. But uh, I invited him to join us. And when I did, he messaged me to preview the group, and he said, I would like to call you. And I said, okay, so I sent him my number. He had been at UPS and attended NC State. And back, this is 20-some, 20 25 years ago, someone from Chi Alpha or one of your groups there gave him a Bible. We were talking about churches who wanted to give me his testimony. And he was invited years later. He had no, no relationship with the Lord. He was invited years later to attend a Bible study. And he, he knew he had that Bible. He didn't want to go and appear ignorant. So he thought he should dust it off and look at it before he went. And he did. And praise God, God called him and got a hold of him, and he's been faithfully serving the Lord ever since. So what you do makes a difference. As long as you are willing to be obedient to God, because God doesn't want any to perish. And he will go out, he will leave the 99 and find that one. And that's what he did for this gentleman. So... Um, Please, please be obedient to the Spirit. We're so glad y'all are there. Um, George and I have talked about the student deaths in this this calendar year, at, at this this um, year at NC State. Fourteen, uh, four were natural causes. One was an accident. Three, two overdoses, and seven suicides. So that that's a lot and. We know that besides your mission trip to India, you've been dealing with that. So we are continually praying, not only for the students at State, for all students that are at that crossroads in their life. So we welcome Tyler and Paige Staten and their family from Chi Alpha. So glad to have you here. Thank you so much. We are so glad to be with you. It's been a few years since we've been at Spring Lane, um, maybe four. Uh, so our kids are a lot bigger than the last time we were here. You can see on the picture, um, I'm Paige. That's my husband, Tyler, in case we didn't say that. Uh, these are our four boys. Two of them are in the back playing. One is homesick, and then one is right here, but he's taller than me, so he doesn't look like a little boy anymore. Uh, so we are a family of six um, at NC State doing Chi Alpha. We are your missionaries. They're your representatives. Um, Chi Alpha is on over 300 campuses around the United States um, and eight in North Carolina. So it's not just us. We have a lot of friends and co-laborers who are doing similar things around North Carolina. Um, one really cool opportunity we've had this year is that just in Raleigh, there are over 70,000 college students. Um, NC State is 35 to 40,000, but we have lots of other campuses, including community colleges. So this year, we've been able to reach out to Meredith College, which is right across the street from NC State. It's an all-girls school. And Shaw University, which is a historically black college in downtown Raleigh. Uh, so we're really excited about the potential for uh, more than NC State. We're kind of uh, 
Believing God for Raleigh Chi Alpha to be a new uh, initiative uh, where we would reach students all over our city and NC State could be the hub. Um, so that's been a really uh, fun thing that God's been doing really naturally. He's just bringing students. Like they're just showing up um, because students are hungry for something. And in the midst of all of this depression and anxiety that is plaguing them, I think they, they know they need something. And what they've been doing isn't working. And so they're looking for answers. And so we are excited to be there to give them uh, some answers, uh, to give them the answer, uh, which is Jesus, and pray that he will transform their lives. Um, it's been a really great semester, a really great year. Uh, we have had some really awesome stories. Tyler's going to tell a few of those stories. Awesome. Do you want to go to that next slide? Uh, I want to make sure you see some of the campuses that, that Chi Alpha is on. Um, I think we, we're at, obviously, NC State. We have a presence at Meredith College uh, and Shaw. Salem College, Wake Forest, uh, Winston-Salem State, UNC Chapel Hill, UNC Wilmington. If you know people on the university campus, we want to encourage you to either talk with us. Um, that would be a great next step. Or just, uh, yeah. I, honestly, if you know a student on a campus in North Carolina or any campus, we would love to help connect them to a campus ministry. If Kyle is not present, we will help find a campus ministry because we believe in it so much. And so please don't, don't uh, neglect that. We feel like it's a, a great avenue. And then if you go to the next slide, um, I just want to share a couple of, of awesome things that God is doing. One of the things, if you don't know what Chi Alpha does, we basically exist to be an outreach extension arm of the Assemblies of God to the college campus. Uh, and we do a weekly service on the campus, Tuesday nights at NC State. Uh, we gather in the student union. Uh, the university allows us to do that. We are just, we are going to take advantage of that. And we pray for students. We speak boldly about uh, Christ and uh, pr preach from Scripture. And so one of the things is we were, we were sharing um, during worship time, I really felt like God was just reminding me that his kingdom has come, yes, through Christ. His kingdom is coming through the Holy Spirit, and his kingdom is to come. But he has given us a glimpse of what will be one day up in heaven, right? And he's brought that to this earth, and we have a chance to be a light to the people around us to give them a glimpse of what one day will be, right? And I think that that on the campus, it's such a thing that is needed. And so through Chi Alpha, we do this weekly service. But even greater than that, we do small groups. We call them life groups, and we have multiple that meet throughout the week. Every weeknight uh, is a life group that is meeting. These are led by student leaders. In fact, uh, in this bottom left picture, you can see a massive group of people. Uh, we went to a ice arena and played something called broom ball. Uh, this is, we had international students come out. They came and played that we connected with. And our live group leaders have been trained to then pull these students into their groups where they say, come and look at the Bible with us. Come and see, just like Jesus would have done with his disciples. We want to do that same model, pull people in and say, hey, you know what? Your life exists more than you getting a degree. Your life is beyond you just uh, getting an A, right? Like, is there so much more that God wants for your life? And so they bring them in, they share scripture, and their lives are being transformed. You can see that, that in that top uh, picture, it says SICKM. That stands for Student Institute of Campus Ministry. This is where we go and we train our student leaders uh, at the beach. We just got back uh, from Topsail and uh, trained these student leaders. We had 15 students go and four of us staff went from NC State. We invested into their lives. Lives were just radically changed. We're seeing new leaders rise up once again and uh, praise God. Like I always wonder every year, I'm like, God, do you have somebody new? And then he does it again. He is so faithful. I know we talked about God being faithful in finances, but he's also faithful in people. And so we have seen this to be true over and over. Um, our leaders, are they have a heart for the campus. They want to reach their friends. They want to make an impact as we talk about the suicides and the, the depression and the anxiety that's happening on the campus. Coming out of COVID, a lot of these individuals have been in isolation. 
And they don't know what it looks like even to make a friend. And so we simply exist to start with that, right? Start with their greatest need of just being a friend to them. And as we are their greatest friend, we can introduce them to the most important friend, Christ, right? And so we are so excited to be able to be at NC State and know that we are know we know that God is doing this great work on that campus. Paige is going to share a couple of specific stories. Uh, do I have, I have one more slide actually? This is our missions trips. We went to Southeast Asia, as Nancy was saying. It, it, it was incredible. I led that team uh, along with one of our interns named Cello. We, our students, their eyes were so opened when we went, and we were able to connect with just different people that had never met a Christian, right? Like, and the opportunity to walk the streets and see the multitudes of people and to pray over them and, and to just be a light in the darkness. And uh, yeah, it was, it was incredible to do that. We, sent, we had seven of us go along with me, so that made eight. Uh, and then we also had 13 individuals who went down to Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta really changed their life as they reached out to the impoverished community there, whether they were homeless or going into the school system and, and reading books to these kids who never had a book read to them in their life. And so just to love them where they're at, right? And then to be a, a glimpse of what that Christ love looks like. I'll let Paige share a little more. Yeah, so Atlanta, what's really cool about Atlanta is uh, it's a church and an inner city ministry called Pure Hope. This was our second year sending students there. Um, and this ministry, it is a long-term ministry. They're there in the community to make a difference in the homeless and low-income community. They're in the schools um, and it transformed these students' lives so much that we have had three different students go back and intern with Pure Hope after having been there for spring break. So one of the girls, I'm going to tell you her story, her name's Brenna. We have a picture of her. Brenna came to NC State. Her parents were actually missionaries in South America. And so she grew up um, her whole life as a missionary kid, but she never really knew Jesus. Uh, she had made a decision that she wasn't really on board with what her parents were doing, she was just there, and she was very lonely. They didn't have a lot of Christian community where they lived, and so um, she had decided her parents were missionaries, but she was going to do her own thing, and then Jesus intercepted her life, uh, transformed her. She came to NC State. She was baptized her first semester at NC State. Uh, we got to baptize her, and man, her life has just been transformed. She, she has been to Atlanta twice now with Pure Hope over spring break. Um, and she's there right now doing a summer internship uh, where she is in the schools working with feeding and clothing programs, um, after school programs. Um, she felt like God asked her to go last summer and she didn't. And she told me I was disobedient to the Lord. He asked me to go and I was too scared. So this summer she said, I'm going to go and I'm going to, it might be delayed, but I'm going to be obedient to what God has asked me to do. So she's there now for the whole summer. Um, and then she's an RA at NC State, and so her heart is to reach the girls on her hall this year, uh, to really be intentional with her evangelism as an RA. She has access to students, and so um, it's been really cool to watch what God has done with a hard heart who said, no, I don't want Jesus, to be transformed to a missionary who wants to reach the girls on her hall uh, with the message of Jesus. And so Brenna is just one of many students who... We are just amazed at what God is doing in her life. We see uh, big dreams in her heart. She's praying about what, what God would have her do long term after she graduates. Um, we have a little bit longer with her, thankfully. It goes really fast. We get them, they get in, and then they leave us, and we send them out. And so that's one of the really hard parts of campus ministry is we, we say goodbye, right, and uh, let them go and do what God's asked them to do. Um, which last night we actually got to be at a wedding where we got to see all a bunch of our alumni that we have sent out um, all back together. And so Tyler's going to talk a little bit about that. In one of our anthem verses for Chi Alpha is 2 Corinthians 5.20 and says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. And then it goes on to talk about how we're reconciling people under Christ. And so that is one of our visions, but it's not just to do that at NC State, but it's to send them out, like Paige said. And it, on this slide, you can see that, that we had this beautiful wedding of this couple that Paige and I had the chance to officiate yesterday, and uh, they were in our Chi Alpha ministry. They just had been so impacted, they're like, we want you to do our wedding. And so as we did this, 
it was a great joy. And with sadness, we're now saying goodbye, but we're sending them out because it's also a great thing. So they'll be moving to Kentucky. And uh, one of the coolest things is one of our international students who is not a believer, who uh, actually grew up in Indonesia, he is going to be at the same university campus area and they're going to be able to walk with this couple. And so God, he knows, right? He knows how to move in people's lives and he strategically is bringing people unto him and moving them to the same city with relationships that he knows will have an impact in their lives. But also, as you look across these people, there's about 25 of us standing in this wedding picture that are all connected with Kai Alpha in some way. And that is just incredible. Over the years, there was one girl who came from Virginia Tech, was a part of our internship, poured into one of our other girls who is now studying to become an army chaplain. Uh, and that girl poured into the bride of this ministry. And like, there's just things that are happening. And that bride poured into others who are now staying at NC State for this next year. And so there's this lineage that continues to move on and on, and disciples are making disciples who are making disciples. And uh, that's how we know if we're being effective, is if we have that long-term ministry that's happening. When, if we cease to do that, then it's hard for us to say that we're making disciples, right? And so we are seeing God move. You have had a hand in this. I want you to know that, that you're gift of sending us to NC State is making it so we can do this. And so we just say thank you. Um, if we are beyond blessed to have you sending us. We are right where we want to be. We have no intention to leave NC State. We love it there. We feel like God is just radically moving and we just have such a heart for the campus. If you go to the next slide, it just has a couple of prayer points on it um, that you could be praying for us. Uh, one of the things we're doing, we just finished up our first term at NC State and signed on for another. If you would be praying for us as we continue our support raising, uh, we had some individuals in our team that have passed away and uh, during COVID hit hard times. And so just, just pray for us as we raise that budget. Um, and then future vision, as Paige talked about us reaching Shaw, reaching Meredith, and doing something greater in the Raleigh area, we want to have the impact and presence on those campuses as well. They need Christ, and uh, we can feel it. And then the other one, we are praying for staff and interns. We have two interns, or three, sorry, interns coming, two from uh, Georgia area and one from Illinois, and they, I believe that God's going to use them in some radical ways this next year. Pray that we would invest well into them, and that God, we would leave them open-handed and let them go wherever God wants them to, to go. If it's our staff, they would stay there. That'd be great. If it's to move on and do ministries elsewhere so that God can, can be seen there, we want that to happen. But would you pray that we would have an increase in our staff teams? Because at, on the campus, we have a great vision, but we can only do so much. Uh, we, we don't want to neglect our kids. We want to make sure that we do all we can at NC State. We don't spread ourselves too thin. And in order to do that, we need more individuals to say yes to the call. So be praying for that. Thank you so much, Pastor David and Church. We are thankful to have Spring Lane Assembly on our team, and uh, you have blessed us tremendously. Outstanding. Outstanding. How, much, how many enjoyed that? Yes. Praise God. What, what, how, how inspirational that is for us to hear all this this morning. So it's my, my daughter went to Evangel College for her initial de degree, and then she went to NC State for her master's degree. And um, she was there at NC State with Dr. Art Hansen, who's one of the professors in chemistry, who was a great, strong believer who was a big influence on my daughter's life. Now my daughter travels all over the country and the world for science, for the company she works for. And it's just how God connects things together. It's just beautiful, amen, it's great. Well, we're glad that you were with us today as we continue with our service. When we were planning to have the meeting we had Wednesday night to take the vote on whether or not we were going to partnership. 
further with uh, making decisions to sort of teach challenge. The Lord really dropped these words into my spirit. I didn't read them anywhere. I just felt like he dropped them right into me before the meeting we had Wednesday night. And that was the words, eyes to see, faith to believe, courage to do. And so I took those words and I mentioned them Wednesday night, but I've developed the message for today from those words. The church, that's us, must have eyes to see, faith to believe, courage to do. Father in heaven, Thank you for what we've already heard today. Thank you for the time of giving praise and honor to our Lord. Father, we thank you for speaking to us through these words and these remaining moments we have. We thank you, Lord, in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I found this little artwork of a church with binoculars probably 12, 14 years ago, and I saved it. I knew one of these days I'd be preaching a message that I needed that artwork. And lo and behold, I was able in my office, which has thousands and thousands of pieces of paper and notes. No question about it. But I was able to find that little clip that I saved for today to illustrate the church, that's us, needs to have eyes to see. It's amazing how we can separate ourselves from the church. We, can, we, we think the church is there and we're here. But the truth is, we're the church. Yes. Have you ever heard somebody say, I think the church ought to be doing this. I think the church ought to be doing that. Well, you're the church. Start doing it. <laughs> the church is us. Amen. It's us. We can think all these things what the church ought to be doing. And uh, one church I heard when someone said the church ought to be doing something, you're appointed. Take over. Do it. You're the church. That's us. I had that added. I had to add that. The church. That's us. Eyes to see. Vision. Faith to believe. The impossible. Courage to do. Bold things. Fearless things. That's what the church is called to do. And it all starts with it all starts with the eyes to see. You gotta see stuff first. Before you can even have faith to believe, before you can have the courage to do, you gotta see it. And that's a lot of what we're talking about this morning. Where there is no vision, the people perish, Proverbs 29, 18. If you don't have a vision, if you, if you don't have an ongoing revelation, you gotta be able to see. Eyes to see. And in John 4, 35b, lift up your eyes and see. Open your eyes and see that the fields are white for the harvest. I know our, our friends this morning know this very well because that's part of their calling. The fields are white for harvest. The harvest is a common biblical theme associated with the kingdom of God. And I gave you a bunch of references we won't go to, but those references speak of the, the theme of the harvest. When the fields are white, that means they're ready to be harvested. I travel in the countryside in different parts of the different states, and I've seen during the harvest time, I've seen those fields, whether it be cotton or whether it be grain, and if, if there's a little bit of a, a knoll, a little bit of a hill on those lands that have that, you can see that wave. It's almost like a wave of harvest blowing in the wind. Right, green fields, looks like a sea of white. Jesus wanted his disciples to understand the urgency and the immediate opportunity of his mission. People that were hungry for the truth came to him, ready to receive salvation. He said, the time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Harvest time might be four months in the natural world, but in the moment for spiritual reaping, he said, the time for harvest is now. It's arrived. 
The disciples were focused on physical and earthly concerns like food, rest, and heaven knows whatever else we get distracted by. I said the disciples focused on physical, earthly concerns. Well, sometimes we as a church, as a church family, we can become sidetracked by focusing on things that may not even really matter that much. I know we do a lot of things, but we do have to always stay on message, and we have to know what the main thing is. Through all of our scurrying around, through all of our things and activities that we do, we've got to always come back to the main thing, and that's the harvest. That's what it's all about. It's easy for us to lose focus and start looking at the wrong thing. We need the sense of urgency that Jesus talked about to his disciples. Urgency is the thing that we need to have. Jesus saw the spiritual necessity. He was consumed with more urgent mission, winning souls for the Father's kingdom. He urged his disciples to redirect their focus so they could see the need. And I think we as a church always have to come and examine ourselves and re-examine our focus. What are we here for? Are we like the YMCA to have a good place to meet and have a social thing going on? Well, I, I, we love having meals together. And that's quite social. But we gotta, we got to always come back to the urgency of the purpose of God for the harvest. He urged his disciples to redirect their focus so they could see the need. Passion. When in Matthew 9, 36-38, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. Jesus saw those crowds and had compassion because they were helpless. They were sh like sheep without a shepherd. And he said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers, the workers, are so few, as Tyler was talking about. They need help. They need help to be able to do more. We need to pray for the Lord of the harvest, who is God. God is the Lord of the harvest. That he would send forth. And the Greek word there, in the Greek, some people translate it, send forth workers into the harvest. If you want to know the, the impact of the Greek used there, a better word would be thrust. Thrust forth. It's a lot stronger than just sin. Thrust is the intent of the Greek used in that passage. <laughs> to thrust out workers into the harvest field. How many believe we need to pray for the God of the harvest, the Lord of the harvest, to send forth laborers? And we are those laborers ourselves here. We must keep our eyes open, seizing the opportunities that He presents. Because God chooses us to be partners with Him. Verse 36 of John 4 says, He who reaps receives wages. He who reaps receives wages. What are the wages? The wages are the souls of men. I said the wages are the souls of men. He who reaps receives wages. And he who gathers fruit unto life eternal. That means the fruit lasts forever. They both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. And we rejoice as the, the stories and the accounts that were given to us today of what they've experienced. Those who've come to Christ, those who are now workers in the harvest, we rejoice with them today. We, we, we support them. And so we all are part of that reaping and we're part of that gathering. And we all rejoice together today. For the stories that they gave us, the, the accounts of people that have come to Christ that are now laborers themselves. I mean, how cool is that? Let's talk about personal corporate blindness. Oh man, this is a church of the seven churches of, of Revelation, Theodicea. 
He says, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Some people think that the church today really looks more like the Laodicea church than any of the seven of the seven churches of Revelation. Because, because they saith, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Man, churches in America are nice. Isn't, isn't this church nice? I mean, it's cool in the summer and warm in the winter and your chairs are so comfortable. I've slept on these chairs when I've come without my little motor home. I've come out and stretched out and I was snoozing, buddy, on these nice, comfortable chairs here when I needed to take a little rest. So our churches, you know, I remember when I was younger, some of our churches were right crude looking. I preached in some crude churches, man, when I first started out. They were really crude. But, but some, that's why some people think we, we kind of look more like the Laodicean church because we're rich and we're increased with goods. And because of that, we sort of think we have need of nothing. But, but Jesus says, no, it's not. That you're wretched. Man, you're miserable. Sometimes we are. Poor, blind, and naked. Man, what a, what a description that he gives about the Laodicean church. Then he says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. He's not talking about a monetary transaction. He's talking about a spiritual transaction. Amen? The gold of character comes from the fires of testing. I said the gold of character comes from the fire of testing. Can anybody say amen to that? That you may be clothed. That you may be clothed. That the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Then he goes to a third thing in these verses of 17 and 18. He says, anoint your eyes with eyesalve that you may see. you got to see. You have to have eyes to see. And he says that you can have sight to spiritual things. We need to open our eyes to spiritual truth. Interestingly enough, in Laodicea, in that area where the church was, there was a medical school that sold eye salve and other medicines in Laodicea. So it's picked up from that, and he says, Buy me gold, refine in the fire, that you may be clothed from your nakedness, and buy eye salve that you can see what other people can't see that you can see what other people don't see. Where you can see the things that are invisible to others, but are visible to you. What a, what a powerful word that. Lord, give us spiritual eyes that we may be able to see so we can do your will. Come on, is that the prayer for us today? Give us good eyes to see. It's amazing how some people can see things and others don't. I've, I've watched in watching people. That's about as fun as shopping is watching people in the mall. Sometimes Joe would be going to other stores I don't want to go, so I'll sit down. Man, I love watching people. You can learn a lot. If you feel bad about yourself, just watch people for a little bit and you'll leave feeling better about yourself. Because there's more strange people more than you. A lot more strange than you. Just watch people. And I've watched kids. I've, I've watched out, out out of the car, out at the mall, and I've seen people walk by the, the, the church ground. There, there's people on the ground. One person will walk right past it. Now you see it. But then another person will see that and pick it up and dispose of it because it didn't look nice for the church or for wherever it was. Some people just see things and they respond. Other people, they don't see it. I, I, I don't see a thing. They don't, they don't see a thing. We need to ask God 
to spiritually anoint our eyes that we can see what other people can't see. That we can see the things that are invisible to some but become visible to us. Amen. That's what he's saying. Anoint your eyes that you can see. Buy me gold. Try it in the fire. Be clothed yourself with righteous robes of righteousness. How many are glad that he clothes us with robes of righteousness? Man, there's so much stuff here that I'm maybe not covering at all. On the back of your sheet, we spend a lot of time on the eyes to see because that's where it really starts. You've got to be able to see. But after you see, you need faith to believe the impossible. Faith to believe. Faith is a noun. Believe is a verb. Essentially the same word. Believe is the form of the verb faith, which is a noun, and believe is the verb form of faith. So I just kind of get it together. Faith to believe. Faith, a noun. Believe, a verb. To believe the impossible. Someone has said faith consists in believing when it is beyond the power of reason to believe. Faith consists in believing when it's beyond the power of reason to believe. It don't make sense. But yet you still believe it. It doesn't, it's not logical. But you still believe it. Faith to believe the impossible. The Bible has much to say about faith to believe. In Romans 10, 17, we grow in faith as we meditate on God's word. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more you read God's word, you're built up in the faith. And faith comes by hearing, even if it comes out of your own mouth. So I, I tell you, it's sometimes when you're reading the word, sometimes it's good to read it out loud so your ears can hear it out of your own mouth. So you hear the word, you speak the word. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of God. The Bible tells us that there is faith to believe in the unseen. There is faith to believe in the unseen. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, Hebrews 11.1, 1, the conviction of things not seen. Faith gives us the ability to believe in impossible things. Eyes give us eyes to see unseen things. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Hope keeps faith alive. Faith keeps the believer alive. Patience keeps hope alive. Hope keeps faith alive. And faith keeps you alive as a believer. That's the way it works. In Matthew 19, 23 through 26, Jesus gives this discourse and he says, it's hard for a rich man to get into heaven. It's like a, a camel going through the eye of a needle. Well, they say there was a place after the gates had closed at night where there was a place where people could come in. It was very low, and it was not easy to get the camels through because it was for people to get through, and it was difficult to get the camels through that eye of the needle. But in his discourse, he talks about it's hard for a rich man to get into heaven. And the reason why, because rich people can trust in their riches. You know, I've got all this, and so maybe I don't need the Lord. My B&D and my bank account look so good, I'm good. Well, that sounds good until it's time to knock on the door to the eternal things. And when uh, the old Grim Reaper comes, uh, that, that, he don't care about your bank account. You don't care how much money you got in the bank when the Grim Reaper shows up, right? So he gives this discord. But in verse 26, Jesus makes this remarkable declaration. He says, in the context of it, well, they say, how could this be possible? I mean, if you say a rich man, it's hard to get to heaven, and the eye, camel going through the eye of the needle, this sounds almost impossible. But Jesus makes the declaration. He said, but with God, 
All things are possible. In the context, it's about salvation for the rich man. But you can't, but you have to take notice. And contextually, it does speak of salvation. But the discourse ends with, but must take notice of the two words, all, let me say all things. All things. In the context is speaking of salvation. But, he, but Jesus declared that with God, all things are possible. You look at those two words. Yes, you have to look at it in context, but you can't dismiss those two words, all things. Then you go to Mark 9, 23. Jesus is talking to a man who has a possessed child. I've met a few families like that. That was supposed to be funny. I thought their children maybe was a little possessed, but it was just me. Jesus said to a father of a possessed child, if you can believe, all things are possible. There's the all things again. All things are possible to him who believes. So Matthew 19, 26, Mark 9, 23, both of them speak concerning the power of God, the sovereignty of God. One of them speaks of salvation, one of them speaks of deliverance of a possessed child, possession of a demonic spirit. But both of them say all things. You've got to take notice of that. They speak of the sovereign power of God. And by the way, this possessed child was delivered. And everybody said, Amen. and aren't you glad? Yes, of course. So, we have to have eyes to see. And when you see, you've got to have faith to believe the impossible thing. But there's that third element that God dropped in my spirit before the meeting third Wednesday night. You got to have courage to do bold things. Come on. And our church took a bold move Wednesday night. A bold move. 100% bold. I mean, where could you get a church together to do a 100% bold? And this is before everybody left town, by the way. They did their vote and they left town. Man, I gotta, you got to be careful this time taking a vote. Lock the doors. Everybody takes off and goes out of town. But when can you get God's people to agree on anything 100%? That, that tells you something. God's in something going on, right? But churches have got to have eyes to see. We, we are the church. We've got to have eyes to see. We've got to have faith to believe that all things are possible. Impossible things become possible because of God to those who believe. And then, but you've got to have the courage. The church, that's us, needs eyes to see, which is vision, faith to believe, impossible things. It's time for the church to stand up and do bold things. Fearless things for the kingdom of God. These folks every day go there to NC State to do bold things. We, we made a decision Wednesday night to do bold things. Thank God we have people that are willing to put it on the line and say we're going to do bold things for God. Be on your guard, 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous and be strong. Amen. Of course. And David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and courageous and do the work. Get the work done, man. you got to get the work done. Don't be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail or forsake you until you get the work done. you got to get the work done. Done. People start stuff, and, but but Barbara needs people that will get it done. Because we got a lot of stuff to do. And I, I just like this verse of, of 28 of 20 of Chronicles. He says, "Be strong, courageous, and do the work." I like that. Don't do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God is with you. He will not fail, forsake you until all the work. 
For the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. Come on. I mean, please, you've got to finish what you start. Yeah, you've got to finish what you start. You've got to do it. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know, because you know, your labor in the Lord is never vain. God will not forget what you have done. He keeps better records than anybody. He knows what you do. And it's never vain. And God will honor that. Psalms 27, 1. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Man, and there are so many more scriptures. We could just fill up pages of scriptures that would pertain to that. But I gave some of the one that I like. Billy Graham said, Courage is contagious. Kind of like COVID, right? Pretty contagious. When you take a stand, the spines of others are often stiffened. We need to stiffen each other's spine to stand up and not be afraid to do bold things, fearless things for God. Man, old David, man, he went out to face Goliath. And he got him five smooth stones because Goliath, they had four brothers. He got five smooth stones, man. And he stood before that giant. He was a giant of a man with a spear that weighed so much weight. And he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. We need to have that kind of boldness. And I know that if we will, if we will be bold for the Lord, he will back us up. The Lord gives us more than enough courage to do bold things. Receive it, and the Nike stole this from the Bible, just do it. Just do it. Stand up and do it. Amen.
confess that I do need some help in my eyes. I can see you, but I need to go what they call is having your eyelids lifted. I've been holding off doing it. I thought it might scare people once I got them wide open. But I do need that when you get a certain age, your eyelids. You know, you got 50 more years. Your eyelids kind of have a way of drooping down a little bit. And every now and then I find myself trying to, try to get them open a little bit wider. But God wants to open our eyes to see things that other people can't see. He wants to give us faith to believe that it's possible. And he wants to give us that supernatural spine to be willing to do those bold things. Yes. And I'll pray that for myself and for all of us today. And for our friends that are here today with us. Time where God does miracles still, doesn't he? Still does miracles. And you got a handsome family. Look at this guy. I mean, just like Hollywood. He looks good. He's a handsome guy. Gets it from his mama, probably. Yeah, that's right. Gets it from his mama. Let's pray. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for our church. Let's pray for the decision that we made Wednesday night. That God will help the, the last hurdles to be overcome. That we will we'll become a healing center through teen challenges and through our church where people who are broken can come and be made whole. That sounds good, doesn't it? That sounds what that almost sounds like something in the New Testament, doesn't it? Broken people getting healed. How about that? We may become a New Testament type church. That'd be great. Father, I thank you for us being together today. I thank you for our friends and Tyler and the family that is with us today. Be with them and bless them in their ministry. Father, give them labors that they requested. Father, you're the Lord of the harvest. We pray the Lord of the harvest to thrust forth laborers to them there in the college scene to help them to spread themselves further through other people, through designating other people to carry the message as well. And Father, for our church and for those things that need to happen for this church to become that healing center for broken people, Father, just... Make it happen. Bring things together to see it come to pass. We pray it. If it be within your will, Father, bring it to pass in the name of Jesus. And bless us all with eyes to see and faith to believe and courage to do. Father, I speak that for us today, for all of us, including myself. In Jesus' name we ask you. And Father, bless our time together as we share meal, meal time together. Jesus, you did a lot of that. You, you, you were doing a lot of meals, making strangers friends. And Father, I know you bless our time of meal sharing. And Father, bless it today. Bless it to our bodies, those who prepare the food. And we give you thanks. And everybody said, and everybody said, that's even better. Bless you. Shake hands and let's head to eat to our food.